we are going to minister to you today. We ask that our service to you be acceptable and that you will anoint us for your service today. That everything that we say and do will be ordained of you and that you will be pleased with what is said. Yes. We love you, Lord, and we, we really want to bless you. We give our service to you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. I'm going to ask all the uh, Tommy Deem to repeat after me. Father, I'm hungry. Father, I'm hungry. I ask you, Lord, to feed me, I ask you, Lord, to feed me. with food from heaven. And I'm thirsty, Lord. And I'm thirsty, Lord. Pour that living water out upon us today. Pour that living water out upon us today. So we can stand and pour out for others. So we can stand and pour out for others. In the name of Messiah Yeshua. In the name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Baruch Hashem. You may be seated. I got a shakaruni this morning. I was praying about what God wanted me to teach on. Uh -huh. And you know what he told me? No. <laughs> Actually, it is in chapter 5, thinking about it. So let's just go right to the verse. Chapter and verse, please. Okay, so this is set Wi-Fi network as home. Yes. Say yes. 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 Okay. All the all of a sudden, my computer gives me new messages, and I don't know what to do with them. I can teach the word of God, but this technical stuff is starting to overload me. <laughs> I'm going to see. Uh, I think it's here. I don't know where it is. Truth. The truth shall set you free. Yeshua said that. <laughs> I thought it was here, but anyway. We'll uh, continue on and do something else that is planned for. Okay, here's what. Here's what surprised me this morning. You know, the spirit of truth is in John chapter, um, let's see, what is it, chapter 3? I might have to use a concordance because my brain isn't fully functioning yet. Well, let's just go to uh, let's just go to uh, go to Isaiah. Do you see this phrase here, the God of Truth? Essentially, I was looking for and searching for the Spirit of Truth. Do you know it appears a lot of places in the Brihad Shabbat, Only one place in the uh, well, not only one place because here's another, but. Um, by the God of truth is in a number of places, but nowhere does it say the spirit of truth in um, the Torah that I can find. It's just not listed. But the God of truth is there. And God is a spirit, according to Yeshua, and he who comes to him must come in, in truth and righteousness, I guess. But anyway. But the spirit of truth Wow. Uh, 
Let me just go ahead and search for Spirit of Truth while I'm at it. So Psalm 31, 6 is the only place that I could see that really had uh, spirit and truth tied together. Okay. Uh, but if you look for God, of, this is a complete Jewish Bible. I've tried it in the King James. It comes up the same. But uh, when I look for... Um, when I look for God of truth, it comes up all over the place in the Old Testament, you know, but it, it's not what I was looking for. I was looking for spirit of truth or spirit with the word to, truth. It says, and those who worship him must, well, must worship, worship him in spirit, spirit and in truth. truth. Exactly. Yes. So we are uh, supposed to be uh, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. How does one go about doing that? There's not much given on spirit and truth in the Bible. But there is God of truth, and there is um, truthfulness in all of the things that we are to be uh, living by. But there's just not apparently anything um, spirit of truth anywhere in the Bible. So the God of truth, of course, Yahweh is the God of truth. Let me just go ahead and look at this. Unto your hand I commit my spirit, and you will redeem me, Adonai, God of truth. So, God is the God of truth, and we know that the characteristics of God are spelled out for us in, um, let's see, it's Exodus chapter, uh, I believe it's in 19. It's where God... Passed before Moses, uh huh, and he uh, decreed unto him Yahweh, Yarachim v'chanun erek apayim v'rav chesed v'emet. He's a God of truth. Okay, and so we can see that the thirteen elements are descriptive elements of God, natures of God, are very clearly contained in that section that describes the 13 characteristics of God. That he is a God of truth. And so um, I, I just felt like there had to be some more references to the spirit of truth somewhere. Um, where I was looking for was a place where it says that um, we are guided by the spirit of truth. And I believe that's in John chapter... I thought it was either three or th three is a three. Well, let me just open up John three and take a look. But it stumped me when I didn't find ruach and spirit together, the truth together. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not uh, John 3. I believe it's probably John 14, where I'm thinking of. Oh, I know where it is. It's just after verse 12. It's so funny that my I know where it is, but I don't know where it is. You know, it's like I'm, I'm having a hard time laying my hand on it. Mm -hmm. Ah, right here. Spirit of Truth. It's verse uh, 
16. It was one verse past where I thought it was. Okay. Okay, and he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Where's and then in verse, verse 16. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 16. No, this is John 14. Oh, 14. Verses What's 15 and 16. He says, and if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Keep my what? Commandments. Oh, I thought it said suggestions. Nope. And then he says, if you keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforting counsel like me, the Spirit of Truth. Uh, you mean you're not going to get the Spirit of Truth unless you keep commandments? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and he says, he will be with you forever. The world cannot seize him because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he is staying with you and will be united with you. I will not leave you, O oh, orphans, I am coming to you. In just a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me because I live, you too will live. And when that day comes, you will know that I am united with the Father and you with me and I with you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Amen. But the fact is that the spirit of truth is promised to those who trust in and believe and obey the commandments of God. And Yeshua said, I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, uh, just like me, the, the spirit of truth. And I've taught that a number of times. And it was so familiar with me that I couldn't believe I couldn't remember the, the verse on it. <laughs> so John 14, what, 18? Uh, 16. <laughs> so it's like two verses after that section that I oft, often teach from. So what it is is that you and I are guided by a different spirit. And it is the spirit of truth. It's the spirit that the world cannot receive. Boy, do we ever see that today in this world. Mm -hmm. They cannot receive the spirit of truth. I really believe that, that our President Trump is walking by the spirit of truth. Amen. And that he is trying so hard to fulfill his promises that he made uh, in the election. I yes. definitely see the spirit of truth walking in his life. Yes. His daughter is amazing, too. I mean, she's really... I mean, she believes in God. She, I can tell she believes in Yeshua. <laughs> I know she believes in the devil and is looking somewhere she can plant her foot right in his mouth. <laughs> so we, we love our president that God has blessed us with. Um, at the same time, the world is bucking him so hard. It is amazing to see how hard... It, it's like everything that's wicked is clearly manifested as wicked yes. when it comes to uh, Trump. That he is, he is trying to manifest the good part of God and his, his love and nature for us. And the world is just opposing him like nothing I've ever nature. seen before. Like iron versus clay. Even this lady in the radio show, they're trying to ditch him. Mm -hmm. they're ditching mobs. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're finding any little thing. Mm -hmm. They're trying to ditch him. Getting sidetracked to... They're trying their best to railroad him, throw him off track. Mm -hmm. It's Obama, not going to work. Obama and Hillary's done much worse, and they they got to stay on him. Yeah. Because they don't like him. Please use the mic. I wonder how many different ways Obama can be proven to be a Muslim, and nobody still believe it. Well, there are those who do believe it, but there have, there have been those who said he's, he's, even people at my work say, he's a Muslim. He's been a Muslim. Mm -hmm. True and true. Mm -hmm. Proved it in many different ways. Well, thank God that President Trump is not a Muslim. Amen. And thank God that he is not a a, um, I'm trying to think of a word that would be descriptive of this. He is not a pneumos. <laughs> He's not against the law. Man. He is uh, 
very strongly a man of God and, and trying to lead this country the way he believed God wants him to. Mm-hmm. And I believe God chose him for this day and this hour. Sure. And I, I just praise God that God is going to help him to overcome every action of the opposition to keep him from making this country be great again. I believe he's going to do everything in his power and might and strength to put things back on track, and I believe he's been doing that, and he's going to continue doing it. We've done a lot Regard- of the first six months of this. Oh. Yeah, regardless of all the opposition. Yep. Yeah, we were just talking about right. that. It's just terrible. Well, isn't it good to have someone who's godly, yeah. at least from former yeah. semblance of righteousness, leading us? Mm-hmm. For once. My hands. <laughs> For once. <laughs> For once in how many years? Oh, my God. I think Trump did pretty. I mean, Trump Bush did pretty good, yeah. both, both him, the, the father and the son. The father and the son. <laughs> but I don't think they were quite strong enough in it that they needed to be. Right. And they didn't quite see the whole picture, and they didn't walk in. They didn't seek after whole truth, and that's the problem. Trump has taken us out of the globalist, the one world. Yeah. And he pulled out this week, he pulled the United States out of the... Um, Paris Agreement. Paris Accords. Yeah. Paris Accords. Yeah. Yeah. Paris yeah. Accords. Somebody Which hit the wrong chord and he took us out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a lot of shortcuts on my desktop that have been added in and it's confusing me. So whoever's modifying my desktop on my Surface Pro needs to stop it, okay? You can open up your own folder and put those things in them or something. Um, so now I have to look through all of these strange icons <laughs> on my desktop to find what I need to do. That's not what I'm looking for. And now I don't even remember what I'm looking for. That's pitiful, isn't it? Okay, so we'll work on this to get those out of the way after a bit. All right. I'm still trying to figure out what the heck that is. Setter plate. Okay, that's Passover. I don't need that on my desktop. Anyway, seemed like 49 seconds as fast as my day's going lately. Well, I have to. I'm just going to put a new folder on here and just start dropping stuff in here. get these out of my way so I can where did my folder go? Oh there it is. Somebody's got my whole organization scheme all mixed up here. <laughs> I would I don't want to have to do this during my class. <laughs> Maybe that'll be enough to get me started. Well, that pen comes in handy, huh? I'm sorry? That pen comes in handy, huh? Yeah, sometimes it does. Okay. Now where was I headed? Lord, help me get recovered. <laughs> we were talking about the spirit of truth. Hmm? Yeah, I, I, I've got that on my, uh, got that right here, but we we have to operate in a spirit of truth. Now, why did I get started on this thing of spirit of truth anyway? Well, God, first of all, he just said, study on the spirit of truth, so that's what we're doing. But I, 
I have had so many times when people want to exclude Yeshua the Messiah as a truth factor. They, put, they, they will acknowledge that he's truth if you ask him point blank. But unless you ask him point blank, they don't admit it. And so they say God is love. And all he is is love and you don't have to worry about nothing else. No, he is truth. And here's where I want to go with this. I got everything hanging up on everything else. Anything that's useful is going to trap on something that's not. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's right. I'll have to redo my cables on the back of my headset after I get through with the class. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting hung up on everything when I'm trying to teach. Okay. Let's just go back to the word truth in Hebrew. Um, we have, okay. Okay, we have here, and I want to get this thing big enough so you can see my marks. Well, I know what I'm trying to do here, John, or Ronnie. <laughs> okay. What's that? Aleph. Position in the Aleph bet? Huh? The position of it in the Aleph bet. The first letter. First, first letter. letter. I can't see the top of it, whatever you're making. Okay. You're too high. It looks like a mem. It is a mem. <clears throat> well, let me just start over a little lower. Okay. Aleph, mm -hmm. and we have and this is supposed to connect over here yeah. mem. mem and the last component is uh, let me get this back here not quite it doesn't look like a bit. Just give me a minute. Okay. Tav. Well, yeah. Everything's is clogged this morning here. Okay. So this is what position is a tav? That's the that's a mem. Last letter. Well, let me just do it this way. Is it outward or at inward? Yeah. Okay, so Tav is a nun with a rish. That's right. That's what my brain was holding off on. Okay, so a little trouble thinking this morning, but that's all right. It'll clear as we go. Okay, so what is Tav then? What position of the olive pit? And this one is. I am the olive in the top. And what's the mem? Mm. It's right in the middle. Middle. Exactly in the middle. Middle. Okay, so this is the word emmet in Hebrew. And emmet includes everything from the beginning. To the end of the Hebrew alphabet, including the very middle letter, which means you can't leave anything out. That's the message of, of Emmet, truth. And is Mem sign of the kingdom? Yeah, the hidden kingdom. 
Uh -huh. The hidden kingdoms were exposed in this one. Yeah. In, the, in the word truth, which is the entire package, uh, the mims of feet is open wide. So, and it's not closing off the middle kingdom that's normally got a little openness to it anyway. Now, so emmet then is an all-inclusive word that when you have the truth, that all truth fits all other truth in the fact that they are all-inclusive of everything. That's good. And when you have the spirit of truth, you don't ignore anything. And when you have the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth is the one that lets all those red flags pop up in front of your eyes when you're talking to somebody and you know something is out of kilter. Mm -hmm. Makes you want to just put the brakes on, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so anyway, so the spirit of truth is the one who gives us those flags. It tells us safe to proceed, not safe to proceed, or danger, Will Robinson, danger. Yeah. <laughs> So we need to be paying attention to the spirit of truth. A lot of people, when they get born again, in quotes, they listen to that Holy Spirit for a short time and then they, got, they get trained by their teachers to ignore it. Because mm -hmm. they're not including the Torah in it. And the Torah is where you get all of the natural inclinations for obeying God and recognizing the truth of the Spirit of God. So when you tell someone who just accepted the Lord, just became a believer, and they say, well, what about the Old Testament? And you say, oh, don't worry about the Old Testament. You don't have to follow that. Well, the first thing out of their mouth should be, is that in the Bible? You know, scripture and verse, please. And if so, where? Where can I see this for myself from God's Word? Because the Spirit of Truth is there working with them the minute they accept Yeshua. But it doesn't take them long to walk away from that because it's so much easier. The flesh just loves having it on the easy path. They don't want no path where you have to be obedient to God's instructions. And so uh, the Pastors have been trained this, and all of their people are trained it, and it's so much more enticing. It seems so much easier to walk on a path that doesn't have any rules. But if you don't have any rules, how can you sin? So if you don't sin, how do you need Messiah anymore? They don't even keep a sign up if they're walking God. Exactly. The sign is the law. All right. I can tell you that everything that we teach here at Zion is contained somewhere within the realm of Emmet. That it is a part. Everything that we teach here is part of Emmet. That you can't, you can't be a full believer in Yahweh, the God of the Bible, and his son, Yeshua, and walk away from any other part of the Bible. If you have, let me just go ahead and clear this again, and we'll, we'll take a, um, we have this little thing here. And uh, we'll get rid of it then. Okay. Okay, this is a glass. May not look like one, but that's the best I can do for this moment. And so we've got this glass, and there's a uh, water line right here. And in it are water. Okay. Well, that's a glass of pure water. How many of you would like to drink a glass of pure water? Yeah, sure. Of course you would. What if somebody sneaks over to your glass and has something in his head and drops a few particles of something in your water. Mm -mm. Not 
pure water? No. How many drops does it take before it's no longer pure? One. Okay. And so the same thing holds true of our faith. Our faith is pure when God gives it to us. Our spirit hungers for truth. We just hunger for it. We see the world around us just isn't giving truth. And most of the people that have come to Zion came because they were looking for truth. Mm -hmm. But when they came and found truth, and then they heard that they have to study the Old Testament, a large number of them at that point said, so, oh, that's not for me. I'm going to go over where there's only love. But only love isn't truth. Because... True love disciplines. Yeah. And God changes our path when we are messing up because he loves us. My youngest son, when he was born, I've told you the story before about how he wanted to reach over there and stick a bobby pin in both prongs of the outlet, the electrical outlet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, no, that'll burn you, baby. Don't do that. And he waited for me to stop looking, and he went over his <laughs> time. And he succeeded. Oh, no. And when he yelped and turned loose of it, he had a scar on his thumb and forefinger that looked like a bobby pin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think must have got red on it. Oh, it did. It just darn near burned it in two. Wow. So if... The, the, the um, problem is at the moment that the thing hits that, that 10 amp breaker point, it pops loose. So he, is going, he had at least 10 amps going through that hairpin. <laughs> oh, because it popped the breaker. Yeah. But I was trying to help him avoid that. Mm -hmm. Don't touch that. That will burn you, baby. Don't touch it. And what did he do? He just said, well, I'm going to do it. You know, I don't care what he says. I'm going to do it. And he, bam, ow, ah, you know, <laughs> that's stupidness. When he was an infant like that, I taught him, don't touch the stove. Mm -hmm. And that was the little radiant heater stoves that you could plug into the wall. And I said, don't touch those. They're hot. They will burn you. He didn't believe me. So he kept trying to reach over there and touch him. I swatted his hand. I said, no, don't do that. And finally, one day, he reached up for the top of the kitchen stove. I said, uh-uh, no, burn. And so he remembered every time I said that, he got a swat. <laughs> so he turned around and walked away from it and waited for me to not be in the room. Mm -hmm. And he went back in there, and it was still pretty hot. Wasn't hot enough to really hurt him, but it was hot enough to give him a nice jolt, a good lesson. And he reached up there and touched that thing and immediately, ah! and I knew he'd done it. And I came back in there and I said, I told you not to do that because it will hurt you. And from then on, he started listening to me when I told him, no, don't do this. But he still was hard-headed and self-determined to just go contrary to me every chance he got. When it came to going into the street, he didn't get the concept that a big car running at about 30 miles an hour down my street could kill him. And it just, it was just scary, terrifying to me to think that kid was somewhere around my place without anything protecting him to go into that street. But the city ordinance would not let me put a fence around my yard. Not in the front. It let me do it in the back, but not in the front. So anyway, this world is against the truth. It's against the truth. If there happens to be a drop of that coming into that water glass, if it just happens to be a drop of cyanide, one sip of that water would kill you. Cyanide is not forgiving. So, here we have the, the glass then on this picture is essentially 
surrounded by Torah. That's the glass that holds our water. And when someone puts something in this glass that's not specified by the Lord, it will change that pure water to impure. And depending on what they put in it, it could have devastating effects on you and your family. Well, the church has put drop after drop after drop after drop after drop after drop after drop of all kinds of garbage in your water. Mm -hmm. the, Christian the traditional Christian church, conventional church, has p totally polluted the water in that glass. You can't tell what's clean or not anymore. Well, you think that drinking alcohol is a big sin. You think that, you think that uh, dancing is a big sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Baptists are real strict on dancing. If you dance, you're going to burn in hell, buddy. Don't you even try it. Mm -hmm. My mom was sick and had a sore throat, and I tried to tell her if she would get some uh, alcohol, get I mean, not rubbing alcohol, but drinking alcohol, mm -hmm. liquor, and mix a little bit of that with a little bit of water and put a little bit of honey and a little bit of lemon in with it, she can drink that, and it will really kick that sore throat. And she went down to <laughs> the liquor store <laughs> and she looked in there and then she looked all around to see if any of her members were watching. <laughs> and, the preacher's wife. and I was thinking, boy, she's probably going to put a hoodie on up over her head to go in there. <laughs> and then they're going to think she think she's coming in to rob the place. <laughs> But she did not want to be seen drinking anything that was forbidden by the church. But she tried it, and it worked. Within about a half a day, that sore throat was gone. So she then realized that God did make these things for our benefit. And it's the truth. Not one sip of alcohol will not send you to burn in the eternal lake of fire, folks. It will not. God gave these things to us as medicines. If somebody abuses the medicine, that's not your fault and that's not God's fault. And so what we have to do is we personally are not to abuse the things that are in the world around us. So, how many of you know that alcohol is also known as spirits? And that's because it, it has an amazing nature to it. There was a time when I was extremely depressed. I was so depressed that I couldn't function. I was actually clinically depressed and I was so frustrated at not being able to come up with an answer to the situations that I was facing and it just got me so far down I couldn't function mm -hmm. so I went to a bar and ordered myself a chocolate espresso uh, not espresso chocolate uh, espresso martini and I drank that, and before I could get finished with it, I was feeling better. And I was shocked, because that was the forbidden juice, you know. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, why is it that it's a sin for me to take something that will help me out of my depression? Chapter and verse. Well, the problem is that you're not paying the pharmaceuticals anything, so they don't get any money. And the pharmaceuticals are a part of behind all these FDA laws, Food and Drug Administration laws. And so you have to work within the Food and Drug Administration laws if you're going to, you know, it's, it's like it was for, prohibited in the early, what, the 30s, 40s? Yeah, prohibition. And you couldn't get a bottle of legal 
uh, high strength alcohol uh, producted anything uh, in those days because it was all forbidden. But the, but the pharmaceuticals and the doctors could prescribe it for you and charge you 10 times the price because they knew what would fix it. They just didn't want you to be able to get it freely and at a low cost. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it still is. Yep, yep. It's, wow. You know, they're just employment. Uh, Lord help us all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's time for us to trust the spirit of truth. And that means we don't have to go to the Catholic Church and confess our sins in order to receive God's forgiveness. All we have to do is get in our prayer closet and confess our sins before him and he will be faithful and just and forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. Chapter and verse, please. 1 John chapter 3, verse uh, 4. Mm. 3, 4, and 5. Okay. For chapter 1 talks about if you sin, confess your sin, and God is faithful and just, and will forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's in about verse 3 or 4. So the point is that we as God's people can trust the spirit of truth to guide us and help us along the way. Now, I don't know where all this ends or begins, but I can tell you that whenever I'm about to make a mistake, the spirit of truth says, no, don't do that. And one time I decided I wasn't going to listen because I was so used to not listening anyway, you know. And I mean, I got hit with a physical stroke that just about killed me. Huh. It was, I, I got lightheaded. I couldn't stand up. I ended up having to crawl into my bedroom and get in bed because I wouldn't listen to the spirit of truth. And I learned my lesson back then very rapidly that you are to pay attention to God's spirit when he speaks to you. The spirit of truth. He will never mislead you. So I thank God that he spared my life in that situation. Amen. And that I have become a better person as a result of listening to the Holy Spirit. And God is very able to uh, help me to find my way in a safe way to uh, all of his truth. Rabbi, yes. uh, how do you recognize the spirit of truth? How can one recognize it that doesn't know how to uh, hear the, the spirit of truth? Well, you have to ingest enough truth that you'll know it when it speaks. And where do we find enough truth to be able to measure it by? The Torah. the Torah. And that's where you find the guidelines that tells you when you're hearing the spirit of truth and when you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, my flesh really desperately sometimes wants me to ignore that spirit of truth. And I just flat out yeah. refuse. And I say, okay, Father, I've got something coming at me that I don't believe is right, so I'm asking you, Lord, to speak to me, and I'm going to tell every other spirit that's around me, including my own human spirit, to shut up and leave me alone and let me hear your voice. And I bind every spiritual entity that's trying to tell me anything that's contrary to the Word of God. And so then I'll just say, okay, now, Lord, I ask you the truth again. Show me what's right. And then I hear a very clear singularity, a single vo voice speaking to me. And I don't hear yes and no simultaneously. And I don't hear to go and do something that's against God's word because God isn't going to do that. Right. So if I have ingested God's word enough, 
then when it comes time for you to hear the spirit of truth, you're going to know it's a spirit of truth because it is in harmony with God's word. Yeah. Is that helpful? Yes, and um, uh, it's so interesting to um, uh, know when, like, when you're praying. Sometimes when when one is praying, you can hear the spirit of truth, and you can hear also the enemy. Mm -hmm that is trying to come against what you're trying to uh, obey mm -hmm. in, in the word and, and obey um, the Ruach HaKodesh. But you can also sometimes know when it's the flesh. Right. A lot of times it's the flesh. Oh, no, do I, you know, what, do, do I, I have, have to, to do, do that? that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so, so um, it's interesting that... Um, you can you can um, feel that spiritual warfare during your prayer time, or when yes. you're praying for someone, and, and um, you can test the spirits. And oh, yeah. how do you test the spirits? It's in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in John chapter First John chapter four verses one and two, it says, uh, "Test the spirits to see if they are of God or not," mm -hmm. and it tells you in there how to how to test the spirits. And that is to see if it's come in the human flesh today. And no demon will acknowledge that because that means he loses. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he, he has to say it, mm -hmm. speak it, not just say okay or yes. He has to say, yes, Jesus is Lord. And if he can't say it, then it's not. Then it's and you know that. Then he has to yeah. say, and I quote, Yeshua the Messiah is here in the flesh today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If he can't say that, then he's not of God. Wow. And, and we can always know that the spirit of truth is always going to lead us to the word, or it will be the word, the, the Bible. It One time I had a guy was uh, trying to tell me something that wasn't true. He was trying to mislead me. He said, how many books in your library? Remember that? <laughs> And he says, I got over 2,000 books in my library, and I read every one of them. If you, let's see your library. How many books you got in your library? I got one. That's the Bible. <laughs> Amen. And he said, well, then I don't have to listen to you. You're not my peer. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> 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 he said, well, I said, you're of a wrong spirit. And he said, well, test me. You know how. The Scripture tells you how, so test me. I said, okay. Is Yeshua the Messiah here in the flesh today? And you know what he responded? Trick question. You twisted it. You twisted it. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> and immediately he turned and ran away from me. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, I exposed him. Wow. So we have to be very careful because the adversary is looking for those he can deceive. And if you can hear from God, you can hear from the devil. And I have had people that I really thought I could trust come up to me and tell me stuff that I knew was not of God. And I said, that's not what God shows me. And he said, then you're wrong. I said, well, you can say that if you want to, but I know my God, and I know his voice, and I know the spirit of truth, and I know that what you told me is not true. So go find yourself another lie or another subject to tell it to you. Yes. The other, the other thing um, is that um, a person that we may be speaking with, they need to have a humble and obedient spirit to receive the truth. Uh, otherwise, they will not. They will be. Um, they will not receive the spirit of truth, and mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, there's levels of knowledge. Every everybody is is at a different spiritual growth level spiritually, and a person to be humble and obedient will receive the spirit of truth and humble themselves to seek the truth. There is the test question you can always ask, just in case you are confused on the issue, and that is First John chapter four verses. 1 and 2 in context with, uh, I believe it's chapter 3, verse 28, which uh, that's the last verse of the previous chapter. And it tells us, by this we know that, this, that 
he lives in us by the Spirit of God that he's given to us. And we know that he's in us when we are obeying his instructions. And so then you put that in with verses 1 and 2. Every spirit that cannot confess that Jesus is here in the flesh today, they are of the adversary. It's not of God. And so we have to be very careful to know the truth. Because when you know the truth, if you walk in his ways, you know the truth. The truth will set you free. And Rabbi, is it true also that, that um, we, we have to be very careful who we speak of to the people about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, because people can reject the Holy Spirit of Truth. And is that um, damaging spiritually to the person that, is, that could possibly reject right. the Spirit of Truth? How does is, that affect I them? I want to ask you a question here. Is... Are the words that Yeshua spoke in the New Testament, are they truth? Yes. Can you believe them? Yes. Many will come in that day saying they are the Messiah. Saying he's here or he's there. Don't believe them. Because the spirit of Messiah is in you. Okay. And so the kingdom of heaven, it says also... The kingdom of heaven is in you as well. So therefore, you should be able to know the truth on an instantaneous basis. And I had this, this one guy came to me and said, God told me to come to Austin, Texas to teach you. Now this guy, he'd only, within the past, I guess within the past couple of months, he's, uh, he started keeping the Sabbath day. And I've been keeping it for many, many, many decades. And he says, I'm supposed to teach you. And then I told him, I said, that's not correct because, and I gave him chapter and verse, and he says, well, it is truth because God told me. Well, see, there he thinks he's hearing God. And he's not hearing God. And so how can I let him judge me? How can I let him teach me? I can't. But I have been studying and praying and crying out to God to help me cleanse my faith for so long, for so many year, years, that I can't just take anybody who walks in off the street that claims to be sent by God and trust them. I just can't do that. So God is the leader of this congregation, not him. And not me. I mean, there have been times I've argued with God over what he's telling me to t say to you guys. I mean, I just flat out said, Lord, I can't do that. Show me chapter and verse, please. And then he would, and I'd say, oh. <laughs> but if I say that, a lot of people are going to leave. He says, so say it. They're not going to understand, Lord. He says, say it. Let them judge themselves. Right. Okay. So I'd say it, and sure enough, lose half my congregation right there. Just like that. You've seen it happen. Oh, yeah. Really? When you said the book of John, you said, you said John, you just say 1 John. Yeah, it's 1 John. Yeah, it is 1 John chapter 4 in the testing right. of spirits. Then yeah. you complain about it, what did I tell you? About how he proves the life? Yep. He does. Yeah. I said, but Lord, how am I supposed to build a congregation here for you? He says, it's my vine. You judging me on how I can prove it, prune it now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're, you really do need to trust. I mean, I have, oh, sorry. You really have to put your trust in knowing, because I have a lot of loved ones who are following false, but, uh, I have learned in years, even before I found Zion, that you just, no, uh, God's going to let you know whether you're going to say something to him or not. Yeah, that's true. And you have to, you have to trust, put trust in that. But if you will listen to the Spirit of but, God. But just constantly saying it, that's just, that's, no, that's driving them, it's going to drive them away. If you can, constantly if constantly yeah. hear the voice of Yahweh, the Spirit of Truth, it's God and I'm, you know, and God and God. Y'all listening? Good and, yeah, yeah. If you constantly are listening yeah. to the Spirit of Truth and doing what He shows you, 
you will be amazed how he will plug thoughts into your head in those situations and will blow them plumb off their feet. I have one more thing when, before we Okay, well, close we got the one class. more minute. That's one about minute. it. So, um, the unpardonable sin, is that rejecting the spirit of truth? Is that... The spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, I, yeah. I can't say that there's any difference between the two, okay? The spirit of God, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Yeshua, they're all the spirit of truth, they're and they're the all right. from yes, the one and the same one. God. Yes. And so... Uh, you know, rejecting the spirit of truth when he speaks to you is rebellion. Is rebellion. And the only thing you can do when that happens is fall on your face, admit it, and quit it. <laughs> yeah, but, but is that what it means, unpardonable? The what? unpardonable no. sin that says that the Holy Spirit is the only one who cannot forgive you of your trespasses. So you have to be very careful what you... That's why. How you present the Ruach. To That's why. He told us, whoever sins you forgive will be forgiven. And whoever sins you uh, deny you will be forgiven. Whoever, is, uh, whoever sins you hold on and won't forgive, they, they are not forgiven. And so... We, as his representatives here, have a powerful voice. Yeah. And so we have to be careful how we use that voice. But don't they have to ask for forgiveness? Yes. But most Christians aren't ready to hear that message yet. Rabbi, is it in Psalms or Proverbs where it says, if the righteous are barely saved, then what of the wicked? Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we have time for this morning. And it's been good. I appreciate all of your comments. And uh, we'll, we'll probably be having more open time as the Lord permits it uh, for... Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Shavuot. Yay. And it is a commanded assembly. So if you're in the Austin area, come by and join us for Shavuot. Yes. If you don't know where we're at, just call us and we'll give you our address. Amen. All right. Well, that's it for today or for the class this morning. And uh, we'll have our morning service shortly. So please don't, don't go away. Stay tuned. More excitement's on the way. Come unto thy light And kings to the brightness of thy rising Lift up thine eyes round about and see They gather themselves all together So arise and shine for thy light is come Arise and shine for thy light is come Arise and shine for thy light is come The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee and the sons of those who afflicted thee And all who have despised you will bow down Then they shall call you the city of the Lord Zion of the Holy One of Israel So arise and shine for thy light is come Arise and shine for thy light is come Arise and shine for thy light is come The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee the glory of the Lord is seen upon thee. So arise and shine for thy light is come. Arise and shine for thy light is come. Arise and shine for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee.
Oh, you, my Lord, are my refuge and strength. Strong fortress I can run to. Peace.